Good morning everybody, this is Vincenzo De Florio and my talk is entitled Fractal Social Organizations. We sit on the shoulder of giants, but this doesn't mean we should stay silent up there. On the contrary, we need to reason, even question, what those giants taught us. Now this is one of the most famous quotes of all, by one of the greatest of giants, Aristotle. And he said, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Okay, let's see this in practice. Take, for instance, this case. The many objects here constitute the parts of a whole. Here you can see that the whole brings you an added value with respect to the parts. So the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And how do you get the whole from the parts? You assemble them together. They are objects. So you can do that. They will even stay like that for a while. But can you do this with other types of systems, say with a social system? No. You can't just assemble the parts there. There you need something extra. You need a social glue. With social systems composed of complex intelligent parts, you need a glue, something that lets the whole thing stay together, through the good times and the bad times, you could say. And the glue is convenience for all parts involved. What you need is in fact a win-win. In other words, in order to keep things together in a whole made of social parts, there must be a mutualistic exchange between all parties involved, in particular between part and social system as a whole. This must be satisfactory, this must be bidirectional. Take for instance the case of bees and their beehive. Obviously we have a win-win here. The bee can live more safely. The beehive benefits from the bee, so as to function. Regrettably, reality is not always so perfect. In some cases, the part does not receive much from the union with a whole. For instance, it can barely survive, but that's it. This, for instance, is a non-optimal match, a win-lose. The result is centrifugal forces that break down the whole in its parts. Thus, the system is fragile doesn't perform well, and it achieves less than what, in principle, it could. Why is this? Often because there is a mismatch between the whole and its parts. In other words, you can expect the whole to be more than its parts if you demote complex systems by treating them as cogs. Is there any better solution? Yeah, of course. Simple arithmetics. If you need to, to keep two things in balance, then either you move one up or you get down the other. Thus, you need a better organization. One that is a complex system in itself. One that does not treat its parts as dummies or slaves. You want an example, I suppose? A good example is probably moving from a strict hierarchy to a community, namely an organization that is peer-to-peer where roles are set by the context, and where all parts can be active participants, not dummies. How does this work in practice? Well, take for instance traditional care organizations. Typically there you have two major parts, two classes of parts actually. You have the active ones, professional caregivers, informal caregivers, the, baby, the parents and so forth. And you have the passive ones. And the problem in care is that there is a few active and more and more passive ones. And the whole is breaking down. We are reaching the known manageability threshold. So how can we improve this? By enabling active participation. By creating communities of care. In such a community of care you would just have members, parts that willingly participate in the activities. And members could state their requests. For instance, Linda here would like to chat with someone. And maybe Rose, somewhere else, is interested in taking a walk, but not alone. So we have two social parts that want something. Now suppose there's a third party that, through some published subscribe mechanism, receives both requests. Say this is a semantic matcher that takes in semantic descriptions and identifies similarities. For instance, that the two requests are to some extent compatible. 
Then what it needs to do is inform the requesters so that a mutualistic relationship may be set up. Now, this is a win-win. Here, the two parts create a self-servicing new home. They create the nucleus of what we call a mutual assistance community. So now we have just seen the case of two individual social parts. And in fact, in nature, this happens at every scale. It is in fact quite a natural strategy, if you allow me the thing. And at a greater scale, what is the whole that emerges? An ecosystem. In fact, what happens is that a whole hierarchy of wholes emerges, each greater than the sum of its parts. So we began modeling these processes, considering finite number of agents and finite classes of roles. What did we end up with? with a matryoshka-like community of communities, which we called fractal social organization. This is, for instance, an FSO with 12 agents, for instance, two GPs, two nurses, and eight patients. We studied this and found that this is modular, self-similar, actually fractal in the mathematical sense. And we found graphical and musical representations, such as this one. <laughs> And so, before we part, let me tell you again about Aristotle. I now understand a little bit better what he meant. Possibly that uh, the whole can be more than the sum of its parts. In a sense, the whole can behave as a beehive, if you like. But in order to do so, the whole must play a clever part. For further information, please have a look here. Let me thank you very much for your attention and wish you a great time the whole day long.